Okay, on this one we're going to talk about the health related components of fitness again. I'm just going to write in HRC and how they're linked to energy systems. So we have, and we had talked about these in the last video, we talked about muscle strength, muscle endurance, cardiorespiratory endurance. Now there are five health related components. We're going to talk about the three that link to energy systems. So we're going to talk about muscle strength. So I'm just going to abbreviate real quick. Muscle endurance and cardiorespiratory endurance. So all of these link to different energy systems. So the muscle strength would link to the ATP CP system. And muscle endurance would link to the glycolytic energy system. And cardiorespiratory endurance would link with the aerobic oxidative energy system. So a good example of the ATP CP system would be sprinting or powerlifting, anything that would be short in duration. Good example here would be let's say sit-ups for one minute for muscle endurance in the glycolytic energy system. And a good example down here would be a marathon. So going out running a marathon. So if you wanted some examples of these energy systems and how they're used, sprinting would be a great example of the ATP CP system. Sit-ups for one minute would be a really good example of using the glycolytic energy system to supply ATP. And running a marathon would be an excellent example of the aerobic oxidative energy system. So let's talk about time real quick. So um, the ATP CP system is going to supply enough energy for about 10 seconds. So we're talking about intense exercise for about 10 seconds. Um, the glycolytic energy system will supply the energy needs up to about two minutes and the aerobic oxidative energy system will supply the energy needs for something that's continuous and repetitive and over five minutes and these systems aren't independent of one another they all kind of work together and I'll describe that in just a second so if we were talking about intensity this would be extremely high like an all-out effort so it's, it's much um, intensity that you could apply over about 10 seconds. So sprinting is a great example of that. So this one's going to be high as well, high to moderate intensity. So something that you can sustain for about two minutes, but eventually you'll fatigue. And this one would be considered a moderate intensity, something that's continuous, repetitive, but the intensity cannot be too high. Otherwise, the anaerobic system would have to kick in to help supply the energy needs. And if the anaerobic system has to kick in, that means uh, eventually you're going to fatigue and you would have to stop. Let's draw out a chart down here so that this will make more sense. So this line here is going to represent time. And this line here is going to represent energy or ATP. So when we first start working out, this is about two seconds. We run off the immediate stored energy within the muscle. So at about 10 seconds, or up to 10 seconds, the ATP PC system kicks in. Let's go here, let's say this is about two minutes. 
After about 10 seconds, if we continue to exercise and the intensity drops off, we're going to use glycolysis, but eventually it'll fatigue around two minutes if we sustain that exercise. And as long as the intensity is low enough, the aerobic oxidative energy system will kick in at about five minutes. So you can see these are not independent of one another. So these are in seconds here, and then that's when we start getting into the minutes. So you can see as we start off, we run off the immediate source of stored ATP, then the ATP CP system kicks in to keep us going for about 10 seconds, and then after that 10 seconds, glycolysis kicks in or the glycolytic energy system kicks in to supply the energy needs up to about two minutes, and then at anything that's continuous and repetitive over five minutes, the aerobic system kicks in to keep us going. So this kind of explains the energy systems and how they work together. So this could be, let's just say we're starting our run. So run off the immediate source of energy for the first two seconds, then ATP CP system kicks in, and then once it fatigues, the glycolytic energy system kicks in until the aerobic oxidative energy system can supply enough um, ATP to keep us going. So. Hopefully this kind of helps link the health related components to the energy systems and gives you a rough idea uh, of how the two work together. So that way when you're doing your pre-testing and you test out muscle strength, um, essentially you're testing out this ATP PC system or CP system. You'll, you'll hear it called both ways. CP means creative phosphate and, and PC means phosphocreatine. So you may hear that used interchangeably. And so for muscle endurance, we're using a glycolytic energy system, or we're going to test the glycolytic energy system. We might do that with sit-ups for one minute. If you wanted to link this back to the last lecture, and for cardiovascular endurance, we would be testing the aerobic oxidative energy system. And so if we wanted to use some sort of test to do this, a one and a half mile run would do that. Anyway, I'm just trying to link that back to the last lecture. So hopefully this shows health related components, how they're linked to energy systems and how the energy systems are not independent of one another, that they all work together to get you moving when you first start your exercise. So I'll see you in the next lecture where we'll talk a little bit more about ATP and really how ATP works to supply us with the energy.